Jennifer, and this is my band, Sage. This content is sponsored by Outdoorsy. Through Outdoorsy, you can rent your camper van out to make extra cash, and you can rent a van to try van life before you commit. Sage is a 2014 Ram ProMaster 2500 high roof. I chose to move into Sage uh, during COVID. 2020 changed a lot of things in my life. I was living in a house in Florida alone and it just like really wasn't working out. I have always been a traveler, huge traveler, and figured what better way to see part of the country than to sell my standalone brick and mortar house, buy one that travels and take it with me everywhere I go. Yeah, I'd love to show you around if you wanna come in and see Sage. This is my partition wall. It was a really important part of the build uh, to me for a number of reasons. A, it adds a division between the cab and then the living space. Uh, I think it just like really makes it feel more like a studio, a home in here. It doesn't feel at all like a van when it shuts. Um, it also added some security. I can close it, latch it um, from the front side. It's painted black. You can't tell at all that there's all of this back here. It also gave me more wall space. So I love the fact that I can put my full length mirror here. I didn't have to sacrifice anywhere else in the van. As you can see, I've got three different hooks for all of my gear kind of things. I always put things in a specific place so I know exactly where they are. So this is my kitchen. I put up all kinds of artwork that I collect along my travels, so everything's really uh, sentimental to me specifically. Uh, spices, cutting board, all my little plants just make it feel really homey to me. I've got a, obviously, two burner propane stove. The propane is under the sink. I went with a uh, the smallest Dometic fridge that still had a freezer compartment. So I have that. Okay, so I feel like this fridge is not the most ideal. I would probably do a different one if I did it again, but I do love the space. Um, it probably holds enough produce and food for me for about a week, week and a half, depending on how much I actually cook in the van. I um, kind of go back and forth between cooking and eating out. And then down here is all of my um, pots and pans and cookware. So this is my sink. It's actually a bathroom vanity sink, uh, but kind of mimics a kitchen farmhouse style. Uh, super pretty to me with the gold accents. I have 22 gallons of water that are stored under the bed that water pumps through. I've got a switch on this side for my water pump and also for my gray water tank um, release. So under the sink, I've got seven gallons of a gray water tank. This is also game changer for having to potentially shower out in the wilderness. This nozzle obviously pulls away and I can open my window completely, turn this around, and from the outside I can reach the hose and turning the water on and off for a quick outdoor shower. This specifically, everyone wonders what it is. It is not a massive uh, coffee carafe. This is actually my Berkey water filter. Uh, this was really important for me to take on the road because no matter where I fill up my water tank, I can put the water in here this way and filter water and have super fresh, clean water. Kind of a water snob. This tastes the best to me of any other water filter I've had. This is my Upperhead kitchen uh, storage. I keep all my food in this one, dry food in this one. Um, lots of space in that one. I keep coffee, tea, spices, uh, cups, and mugs. Yeah, so this is my like seating area. I've got two little benches across from each other, a table that opens out so we can, I can eat with a friend across from each other. Things on the table. This bench um, houses my battery. I've got a, a Yeti Go Zero, but I know that it works really well. My solar panels come directly here. It charges and powers everything in the van, so besides the propane. So it's great that way. Um, up here, I've just got like little extra storage for kind of electronics, office books, overflow. Yeah, and then right here, I've got my controls for my water pump and my gray tank and also a propane monitor that just alerts me if there's any leaking propane, which is important, and some plugs and USB ports. Um, these cabinets are just extra clothing storage, which is great, as is 
this guy. My light control panel is here. Uh, I've got all kinds of different features. My cabin lights over my bed, a separate switch for the lights over the kitchen, and then I've got the running lights over the bed, running lights under the kitchen. So lots of different light options, which is great. Also my max air fan. I've got two max air fans, but it's really nice to be able to draw air in one and air out the other. Yeah, and this is also like a little tribute to my dog Sam that passed away last year. He was my adventure road buddy, and so now he definitely lives on in spirit with me. So I had to make sure he was properly highlighted. Um, all of these are closed storage. It's uh, funny, I have way more storage than I thought I would when I was paring down for van life. I had reduced to a lot of clothes and then I started moving things into the van and realized I had more space. So I was like, all right, I guess I'll just take all my clothes. I also have little extra book cases. So I actually added these on myself with a friend afterwards because it was just empty space and I love books. So lots of books here, lots of books on this one over here as well. Okay, and then this is kind of my like utilitarian uh, cabinet counter. This top drawer is multifunctional. On the left side, I've got all of my silverware, uh, cooking utensils, and then this is my toilet. Uh, this is an airhead composting toilet. It's got a liquid and a solid diversion. The liquids go into the front jug, the solids go into the back into a composting dirt component. Continuous vent outside, uh, you churn when you're done to rotate the compost. It legitimately never smells. Shocked, everyone is shocked. I love it so much. I cannot imagine man life without this. Yeah, the only weird thing about having a, uh, a toilet in your home is A, you have to get used to going like in your kitchen um, and also because of where my partition wall is and it slides out and there's a mirror it took a little bit of getting used to to literally just watching yourself go to the bathroom but get used to everything really quickly this is obviously my bed it was important for me to have a fixed bed I just know that I didn't want to like be putting my bed up and down to go to bed every night. Uh, sleep is very important to me. And I genuinely just like will hang out in my bed a lot of times. The only thing I think I would change is I would potentially make it a little bit lower just because the sunroof area is the only place I can sit up straight. But otherwise, I love it. It's a standard American full size. Uh, it's exactly six feet from um, head to foot. I'm 5'5", so it works perfect. I've got my window at the feet of the bed so I can slide that open or close um, and then I just like left this totally blank so I could have kind of more of like a headboard. I like, you know, I just like use all the pillows to make it super comfy. The skylight does open so I can open it about this far or I can take it fully off, remove the glass and that's the only way I have to access my roof and solar panels to clean them. Um, I actually like that as a safety feature. I don't have a ladder on the back. No one else can get to my roof unless you go through the sunroof. And again, it was just really important for me to have places to kind of express my personality and make this van my van and not just another van. So I use this space as kind of a chronological timeline of stickers of everywhere I've traveled so far. Um, I love that if I do ever part with the van, I can just unscrew it, take this with me. Got tons more stickers I still need to put up. Um, and along with that, my map. So I've kind of sharpied out all of the places I've been and then done other colors of projected future routes. Um, it's just really fun to have that visual representation of places I've been and have it be in like a colorful um, decor kind of way. I also uh, really love this counter extension. It's super nice just to have extra worktop space if I need to prep or I even have a little stool that I can pull out from my bulkhead and sit right here and eat at it or do my makeup or anything else. This is my garage basement area. Obviously it's a mess, but it fits so much stuff. I've got my folding bike. I've got a toolbox. I've got a stand up inflatable paddle board, 22 gallons of water uh, hose to fill it. My mom and I added some AstroTurf, which has been super nice. And yeah, just tons of storage back here. This is also a little add on uh, because I had this extra lip and there's a space between the bed and the door where things could fall through. I added this little fold down kind of nightstand 
so I can fold it down, nothing's going to fall off the side of the bed, and I can use it for, you know, mugs, water cups, anything like that. Thanks so much for checking out Sage with me. Uh, if you want to follow along on our adventures, my Instagram handle is This Vegan Wanderlust, and I hope to see you out on the road. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you hadn't noticed, we do sell an ebook for how to convert a van. It has over 190 pages of detailed instructions and diagrams, also 25 video tutorials which are specifically for the ebook buyer. Creating a van for many people is obviously a really intimidating project, but I really believe, and I've seen it time and time and time again, that with the right information, anyone can turn out with a pretty decent van conversion. So check the link in the description, subscribe to the channel if you are not already, uh, and drop us a comment if you like this video. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next week.